It is so fun to see fish behaviors and personalities. A scorpion fish parked itself on some rocks. But this damselfish was not happy and shared its feelings before quickly swimming away. Or perhaps they were just playing tag. It wasn't until I started editing some of our night footage that I noticed a schoolmaster in quite a few shots. At first, I thought it was in a hunting team with this soapfish, but then it kept inadvertently photobombing my shots as it used my lights to spot a quick snack. Kudos for the opportunistic night hunting. This one was more deliberate. I was trying to capture a scarlet-striped cleaner shrimp under a rock when this sharp-nosed puffer thought it was the star. Come on, man. Get out of here. Hashtag fish divas. You won't find Cha 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 on Stinampa's official marine park dive list, or on many of the published Bonaire dive site maps, but it is known locally and there are a few online portals that have dive site information. The name Cha Cha Cha, also spelled as three separate words, comes from a woman that used to live in the area who loved to dance and even gave lessons. Cha 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 is not a site you can dive anytime you want. That's because it sits at the south end of Bonaire's shipping port. The general rule we heard was no diving when cruise ships are docked. And even when they're not docked, the port authority has posted no diving, swimming, or snorkeling signs around the moorings. For those that notice or care, we'll show some underwater navigation boundaries in the dive profile section a little later in this video. A cement and wood pier extends into the water and is the base for a lot of water activity. There is a small rocky beach to the right and to the left, a small cement ramp, typically covered with a small layer of sand, leads to a rocky ledge. The rest of the shoreline to the south consists of a nice red brick walkway dotted with cement benches and tables that takes you all the way to Divi Flamingo. Oh, there are also three palapas close to the pier. Despite all the cement and brick, Bonaire's nature does peek through. In addition to these lizards, you may see an iguana around. Of course, it's not uncommon to see crab along the water's edge. You might see some needlefish in the shallows as well. In the mornings, colorful birds may be out scrounging for a meal and check out some of the local flowers and fruit trees in the area when walking to and from your car. Most days, you won't be the only ones in the water. Cha-cha-cha is popular for swimming, relaxing, and even water-based exercise classes. Because it sits adjacent to a working dock, the reef has suffered a bit over the years. There's a noticeable amount of trash strewn across the reef, and there are some spots that look pretty barren. It isn't too surprising, given massive ship engines creating artificial currents and stirring up sediment on a daily basis. Still, to quote Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park, life finds a way. We actually saw two first-time captures at Cha-Cha-Cha. This black ear wrasse, and this spiny brittle star. Other pretty cool stuff included a pair of scarlet-striped cleaning shrimp and the largest ribbon worm we've ever seen. We'll show longer clips later, but if you want to learn more about the uncommon animals shown here, check out the video description below for links to additional information about each one. This is the part where we typically ask you to subscribe if you like the content. And to accompany this appeal, we'll share some reef cleanup footage from right here at Cha Cha Cha. That's right. For every subscriber we get, we'll take one piece of trash out of the ocean. Now it's not all going to be underwear, but we'll do the best we can. Thanks! Really tiny smiley face.
Cha-Cha-Cha is located on the southern end of downtown Krylandyke, on Bonaire's leeward side. Getting there is super easy given its central location. If you're coming from the north, take Kaya Gobernander Nicholas de Brut south to Kaya Aruba, turn right for one block, and then turn left at the water onto Kaya Crane. Follow that for a thousand feet and veer right as it turns into Kaya Helmund. Proceed another 1500 feet and you should see a pier with ladders and a bench to the right. If you're coming from the south, drive north on Kaya International from the airport and then turn left at the roundabout onto Kaya Industria. At the T intersection, turn right onto Julio Abraham Boulevard and proceed for two blocks. Turn left onto Kaya Francia, left again onto Kaya Helmund, and you should see the pier on your right. Pro tip, maps.me is an excellent free offline GPS map. Notice we're getting real-time driving directions to Cha 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 Beach while in airplane mode. There is parking on the street, in this parking lot at the end of the street, and around the corner. If you choose the street, watch out for a few no parking signs. Gearing up can be done at your truck or one of several cement benches located along the sidewalk. Another option is Dive Friends, which is located directly across the street from the pier. Renting tanks from them not only allows you to park right in front, but they also have a full complement of amenities, including lots of benches for setting up equipment, bathrooms, lockers, a shower, rinse tanks, and a place to hang wet gear. Plus, if you forgot anything or something breaks, they have a retail shop. And be sure to check out the very nice dive site map hanging on the wall. Gearing up is a breeze, and it's a short walk to the pier. If you're fair-skinned like me, Dive Friends has lots of shade, and the buildings and trees along the street help block the morning sun as well. There are several ways to enter the water. One option is to go down the stairs to the left and walk along the side of the pier directly into the water. There are some rocks, but it's not too bad. Another option is to use one of the ladders, and a third is taking a giant stride off the end of the pier, which is doable in eight feet of water, but take care you don't touch the bottom because, you know, animals live there. Once in the water, it's about a five minute swim to the drop off over a sand and coral debris bottom. Just because there aren't any large ships around, doesn't mean there aren't any overhead hazards. Small boats cross the reef from time to time and even come up to the Cha-Cha-Cha Pier. Make sure to keep your eyes and ears open whenever near the surface. If you want to use your compass for navigation, 260 degrees west points you to the reef and 80 degrees east points you back to shore. That said, this rope extending out from the pier is pretty handy as well. It goes down to a depth of 20 feet and ends at a large cement block. About 40 feet to the north, a metal pipe starts that goes all the way down to 110 feet. Together, they form a boundary. Diving, swimming, and snorkeling are not allowed north of those, as that is a reserved area for commercial ships and pier security. But they are great landmarks to get home. When you run into one of those, turn right and you'll head straight toward the pier. It's a relatively short swim from the pier to the reef over slowly descending shallows. There is a lot of rock and coral debris at first, but from 30 feet down, it's pretty nice. The drop-off goes down to 120 feet, where it levels off to a sandy bottom. This reef doesn't have any towering coral, but it does get fairly dense in spots, and the fish are plentiful. Here's what it looks like in 20-foot increments.
Whenever we dive here, the current is usually fairly minimal. That isn't to say it's always like that, but we've found these to be very relaxing dives. While there may not be anything particularly outstanding at this dive site, there are a few features you may want to visit. Given its proximity to piers and shipping activity, as well as storms over time, there are a few man-made objects underwater. Some are larger than others, and almost all of them are teeming with life. The entry pier and a large mooring to the south provide protection for all sorts of fish and other creatures. Schools of juveniles, like these sergeant majors, can be seen near the top, while juvenile tang, parrotfish, and surgeonfish are often hanging around near the bottom. The rock and coral debris in the shallows is like a buffet for grazing parrotfish, and the sand is home to hermit crabs and peacock flounder. Finally, the paddy dive site mentions an anchor around 25 feet coming back from Calabas Reef. We started at the Divi Flamingo mooring buoy and swam back to the Cha 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 Pier, but didn't see one. If you know where it is, please leave a note in the comment section below. We'll shoot some video of it and post an update. Thanks! Despite what might appear to be a lackluster underwater landscape, Cha 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 has quite a bit of underwater sea life. Leslie was looking for critters under a concrete slab in the shallows, and found two gorgeous scarlet striped cleaner shrimp. Our first time capture streak continued with this black ear wrasse, just in the shallows near the pier. We also saw several schools here. These white mullets foraged for food in the sandy shallows, while these smallmouth grunts hung out near the drop-off. And as we were getting the deep footage, we caught a small school of tarpon relaxing at the bottom of the reef. You can see quite a bit diving cha-cha-cha. Here are a few clips of other great sea life we saw during our day dives. We dove cha-cha-cha a couple of times after sunset, and it did not disappoint. 
At first, I was super excited to see this cowrie shell moving, but then I saw it was occupied by a red reef crab. Still cool, though. My buddy Keith found what appeared to be a bearded fireworm nursery. There are 10 babies visible, and who knows how many others elsewhere on the sponge. And of course the tarpon love to hunt with video lights. At one point I counted six, and they were not very shy about getting close. The second best thing we caught was this spiny brittle star in between some lobed star coral. We usually only see an arm or two, so getting the body was a first time capture. Our night dive's biggest highlight was definitely this super long ribbon worm. We've never seen one that long, so we looked it up, and they can apparently get up to 100 feet. Yikes! Anyway, here are a few more examples of sea life you might see at Cha 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 when the sun goes down. Enjoy!